greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views, as Sam I.B. DeGange doing political commentary for The Media Speaks. Guys, we have interesting stories to get to today. One of the first ones I wanted to get to, I guess it's because, like, my, my nerdism is so painfully high, is that... How many of you remember the uh, the movie Back to the Future 2? Now, it's funny because Christelle told me that it was actually the the um, Back to the Future 3. So I went ahead and got a hold of... Um, I got a hold of the uh, movie and found out that when I was watching part three, it was actually part two that I wanted. And the reason I'm going to go and give us some uh, appropriate music here, the reason that I'm doing it is because I think it's kind of interesting to look at the number of things that were right in the movie. Now, am I saying that they were psychics and what you see in a movie, therefore, automatically is what you should believe to be true? And that they're predicting this and predicting that. That's not really what I think. What I'm saying is that there are a number of really, really interesting coincidences. Or as I would say, insights. I think when they made the movie, they knew intrinsically that certain things looked like they were going in a certain direction. And it's not because I think there's some great Illuminati hand controlling everything that happens. It's more like I think it's interesting to look at how many things they were right about. Obviously, we do not have a fax machine in every room because we don't use fax machines, we use cell phones. But some of these things were interesting and I thought they were worthy of note. So we will let our 80s music play as we cover this KitDanielsInfoWars.com. Um, and if you think it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, it's just all Sam's gone off the deep end again. Hold on. In the Back to the Future, Part 2, Marty McFly travels uh, to October 21st, 2015, which has just ended as I go live, which is today. And so let's examine uh, the five Big Brother predictions uh, that the movie made, which turned out to be true. Personal drones. Flying drones appear numerous times in the Back to the Future 2015, and in one instance, a drone even takes aerial photos of a news organization. This prediction came true. News outlets, such as InfoWars, are using drones to both take photos and videos. And as those of you that can see fact cam right there, it's exactly what you're looking at. Weather modification. When Marty and Doc arrive in 2015, informs Marty, uh, Doc informs Marty that the government can control the weather, such as thunderstorms. The U.S. government has been experimenting with weather modification for decades, and recently the lead researcher for geoengineeringwatch.org, Dane Wigington, revealed how government weather experiments may be linked to wildfires throughout droughts in California. Am I saying it's happening? No, that's an awful big bite to take when you call yourself the correct views. But I can tell you this, they have at the very least been claiming to try to do it. And historically speaking, for purposes of commentary, Huey Lewis and the News Power of Love, I have to say that and they won't let me use it legally. Um, it's interesting to note they've been trying to do this for a long time. And as we listen to Huey Lewis, um, the fact that they're trying to, historically you could argue they were claiming to be trying to make a nuclear bomb. Of course, by the time the, the world heard about it, it was already made. If that's true, then they're already doing it. If it's not, I'm not going to claim it is. I've given you the facts. You go from there as you wish. The U.S. government has been experimenting with them, like I said, for decades. Um, I already read that. Biometric devices as we move on. It's a lot to run here, you know. I'm by myself. In the film, Marty's girlfriend uses her thumbprint to open the door to a house. I mean by myself, trigger it. Christelle helped me set it up. Today's 2015 is no different. Financial institutions, tech companies... And transhumanists have been advocating the widespread use of biometrics for some time. 
Now, the thing is, in the movie, it's given us something that is extremely uh, uh, helpful. And it is, but listen to this. It's a bad exchange for convenience, says Rebecca Jeschke of the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Since your fingerprint is a very sensitive piece of property, property, and of course, once something is hacked, and since, of course, look up the Internet of Things if you don't know what I'm talking about. Once the Internet of Things hits, then you, once you've hacked your fingerprint, you can never really get that back again. So that, that's kind of important. Mobile payment technology. In the movie, an elderly lady asks Marty to electronically donate $100 to save Hill Valley's historic clock tower. Well, in real life, international banks have in fact been pushing for wireless cashless payments via smartphones. Uh, not only do they eradicate privacy, but also uh, they can keep track of where the money goes in case of bail-ins. That's a double-edged sword. I think you can encrypt these things, and that would be a very good idea. You can encrypt your phone. If you don't know that, look it up. You can. Um, my band hasn't started doing it yet, but I'm pretty sure, shout out to Link, our coolest manager ever, I'm pretty sure that uh, there are ways that you can secure your phone and still use it for things. And like I said, being in the band, we're going to be selling CDs off of cell phones all the time. Um... Another thing, and I'm in, I, I don't bank. Well, Sam, what if you have to bank? Then I'll open up a bank account, and I'll keep it open enough to keep the passing time CD selling, and I won't put any money in it. I won't use their ATMs, and I won't use it any more than the structure already makes me do. And if you want to know more on that, look up How to Live Without Banks. It's, it's on my site. It's free. Charge you nothing. I'll tell you how to do it. I do it every day. Smart technology and wearables. Marty McFly wears smart clothing in 2015, and it senses to adjust his size. Well, today, smart technology is invading everything. Unfortunately, it's not our clothes. Smart street lights that track everything we do all the time on the horizon. And, of course, uh, we all know what the uh, smart meter does. I have a smart meter in my house, and I've had miserable sleep ever since it's been put in. So people that tell you that it's not real are simply lying. It's miserable to have them in your house. And I, I saw this thing earlier. Uh, wearable clothing could, in fact, maybe be a really bad idea since there's so many fatties in real life and not in the movie. But, I mean, you could make them adjust for some weight. I mean, I still want my hoverboard. That's just me. All right, guys, moving in into other news. Happy Back to the Future Day as it passes to all of you nerds like me. Half my viewer audience has no idea what I'm talking about. That's fine. Um, Jimmy Carter pre provides Putin with maps on ISIS strikes. This is really good, and I'll tell you why. Jimmy Carter was a dreadful president. I mean, really, really, he was not a good president. But the thing is with Jimmy Carter, seen right there on Fact Cam, the thing is with Jimmy Carter is he was a very good man. And that's rare in politics. I wish that he had been a fiscal conservative because I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that if Jimmy Carter had been a fiscal conservative, and allowed a structure set up where the states took over a lot of the welfare that he wanted instead of the federal government. If he'd have done that, I think he would be talking about one of the best presidents of our lifetime. Instead, he went the democratic uh, socialist direction and uh, damn near destroyed the country. But as a man, Jimmy Carter is a damn good man. Do you realize that as I'm talking to you right in here at 4.14 in the morning, 10, 22, 2015, do you realize he is dying of cancer? And he's still out there doing this. Why? Well, he's doing it because Russia has had the excuse for a very long time that they don't mean to bomb the American allies. They're just trying to kill ISIS. Well, I'll tell you what. ISIS deliberately hides these things near churches and near hospitals and things like that because they want to make you bomb them so that you look like the bad guy. When really, you had a choice. You either bomb the mosque that has the weapons in it or you allow the weapons to exist to be shot at you. But you never hear that on the news. That's why you've tuned into the correct views. Well, this is what Carter has done. Carter has made this much harder for Russia to do. 
It's also made it much harder for Obama to manipulate the situation in a way that is counteractive. So check this out. I was very impressed with this. Please, if you're listening, leave me a comment on this very topic because this was of extreme interest to me. Does anybody out there love history or do you just want me to sit there and I will read the news like a robot and I will act like, do you want some commentary or do you want a robot? This was really interesting to me as a person. Listen to this. Claiming that he knows Russian President Vladimir Putin fairly well because he once discussed a common interest in fly fishing. That's not why he said he knew him. They're already trying to skew this. Former President Jimmy Carter took the initiative to, to provide maps of Islamic State positions in Syria to Russia and embassy in Washington. <clears throat> It's a move that's at odds with the Obama administration. That's because Obama is actively working to the death of the country, which is something that uh, um, Carter never did. Uh, the wrong though he may have been. Also, let's remember that what they're doing in this article is saying because he told a fly fishing story, they're assuming that that's the only conversation he's ever had with Putin. That way, if you word it that way, you can make him look wrong. So don't fall for it. This article is skewed. He said, I sent the man who is dying of cancer, potentially, here. I sent Putin a message Thursday and asked him if he wanted a copy of our map so that he could bomb accurately in Syria. And then by Friday, the Russian embassy in Atlanta, I mean in Washington, called down and told me they would very much like to have the map. Carter said this on his Sunday school class in Georgia, according to a video of his remarks, which first aired on NBC News. So in the future, if Russia doesn't bomb the right places, you'll know it's not Putin's fault, but it's my fault, he added. Let me pause long enough to explain to you why this is a move of absolute freaking genius. That is not just some funny sentence, he said. What Carter just did was say, Putin, we're tired of your excuses. We're tired of them. And we're going to let you know exactly where ISIS is so that you can bomb them and not us. Carter also said, Mr. Obama, you are a dreadful, dreadful person. And I am going to eliminate your ability to attack Russia because I'm going to let them know where the enemy really is. I'm sorry, that is amazing. And what, you think you're going to bring it to Jimmy Carter? Jimmy Carter has cancer. It's his second or third time having it. He's in his late 80s. What, what are you going to do to him? What are you going to do to him? Sit the hell down. You ain't going to do jack to him. I'm very, very impressed by this. And again, I'm not a big Jimmy Carter fan in terms of a president, but I am as a human being. The Carter Center claims that they sent maps of the Islamic State's location, that would be ISIS for you Russia fans, to Russia in an attempt to help improve their airstrike accuracy, where U.S. officials have said that Russia has bombed rebels and CIA-backed groups rather than the Islamic terrorist group. That is some of the most awesome, just totally awesome news I've ever given on this show. Smooth move, Jimmy Carter. Well played. Very very well played. Uh, listen to this, friends. Michael Snyder, end of the American dream. America looks a lot like Nazi Germany did just prior to World War II. Some of you are going to be saying, Sam, you just covered something like this not that long ago. And you, in fact, are right and wrong. I have been covering this damn near since, since the start of the correct views, of which over a hundred videos have been stolen by YouTube, and a 500 still exist. Now listen to me very closely. I am not implying that Obama wants to kill Jews, that he wants to set up gas chambers, none of that. That's not what I'm saying when I talk about fascism. That is Nazism. Fascism is a little different, but equally horrible in a slightly different way. Fascism, of which uh, Nazism, National Socialist Party, of which Nazism is, um, came from fascism. 
Fascism is an unholy alliance between the elite and the military-industrial complex, the movers and the shakers, the 1%, the bankers, and the weapons makers. The Boeings, the Halliburtons, if you will. And I know Boeing does a lot of good. That doesn't mean they also don't do a lot of evil. Can I get an amen? Um, we are exactly where Nazi Germany was before things went very, very bad in Nazi Germany. I don't mean that we are going to be killing Jews in gas chambers in the next five years. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the other side of Nazism. I'm talking about the unholy alliance between the 1% and the movers and shakers which is something that is not inherent to capitalism, but is inherent to socialism. And you need to understand that the Nazis were socialists, even though they hated the communists. It was separate in a few ways. One of the ways that it was different was the way that the government was set up, whereas uh, with communism on paper, that is not the case. Of course, as we see with Stalin, communism doesn't work. That's why you people today can't tell the difference between Stalin and Hitler. But back then it was a subtle difference but an important difference which involved the way the 1% uh, interacted with the government. Whereas with communism it didn't involve the 1% so much as it did uh, backroom favors, if you could word it that way, to be real. Check this out, friends. Once upon a time, America fought a great war to rid the world of the Nazis, but now we have become just like them. No, I don't mean killing Jews. Don't zone out. That's not what I'm talking about. In fact, I would venture to say that the Nazification of the United States is pretty much complete. As you see below, we have a heavily socialized economy where tax rates are out of control, and lots of freebies are given out just like the Nazis used to do. And just like the Nazis, our society has become highly militarized and our government has become increasingly obsessed with watching, tracking, monitoring, and controlling the general population. For those of you that doubt me, look up the name Edward Snowden. More than anything else, all of the pageantry and beauty in our society masks an evil which has grown to a level that is almost unspeakable. It says, the other day, my wife and I, Michael Snyder, and I were watching some footage of the beautiful parades and celebration that were in Germany before World War II, and they certainly were impressive. Let me pause. Some of the most amazing march and uh, patriotic music ever written was written in Nazi Germany. Do you realize the man who ran the Nazi youth camps, which brainwashed and poisoned the minds of many, many children, do you realize that that man wrote the Hitler Youth Anthem? Forward. Vorwärts, which means forward. Um, forward. Is that Obama's slogan? Yes, it was, by the way. Forward. The exact same slogan Obama picked. It was called Vorwärts, and it's one of the most catchy songs ever. And let me tell you why I'm mentioning it. It's really, really creepy. I'll play a piece of it for you. It's creepy because... It stays in your head, and it's this happy song about uh, dedication to the country, and the song stays in your head, and you listen to it over and over again because it's catchy. And you think, oh, I could listen to this. This is dedication to country and spirit. But when you really break it down... He's saying that we are willing to die for the flag as we pledge ourselves to Hitler. That's what it's saying. But it's hidden. It's hidden very subtly. Listen to this, Listen to this happy little piece of music that was written here. And I'm, again, I mention this because it's frightening. The way evil, true evil, get into your life isn't by looking like a man with pitchforks and a horns. Nobody will talk to that man. Evil gets into your life a little more subtly than that. He writes, just because something happens behind closed doors, though, does not make it okay. And it's like the Nazis, our society is about to learn an exceedingly painful lesson in this regard. Listen to this. I'm going to 
move my headset. You know what that is? Unfortunately, that's a brilliant piece of March music. It's, it's a well-crafted song. I don't have the lyric version. I'm not going to dick with it right now. But friends, listen to me. Sometimes evil is packaged in beauty and talent and given to you in such a way that you think that it's good. And I'm not talking about fiction. I'm a horror movie fan. I'm a death metal fan. I love obituary. I love it. That's not what I'm talking about. Listen, let's talk about the economy. So as most people tend to regard the Nazis as being far right, which is to say in this country, GOP. But the truth is that they were actually socialists, which would be Bernie Sanders. By heavily taxing and spending, the Nazis were able to temporarily restore economic prosperity after the great economic crisis that occurred under the Weimar Republic. Pause. For those of you that don't know, the Weimar Republic started printing massive amounts of money. Let's say that this paper right here, this paper is worth a lot of money. However, all of these papers right here, I'm going to print all of these. And now all of these are also worth a lot of money. Well, now everybody's got one. Look, look, they're flying all over the room. Wee, look, wee, wee. What happens is you have to take in a wheelbarrow full of money to buy something once you do that because all of these pieces of paper aren't worth anything anymore because you printed too many and you did that because you had bad economic policy which we're doing look up quantitative easing if you don't think we're doing it today we are doing it today we're doing the same things to our economy today that happened back then in the Weimar Republic which was a result of the end of the Tri Treaty of Versailles in World War I if you don't know what that is I don't have time to give it to you I'm just giving you this so that you can look it up in case you think that I'm somehow making this up I'm damn near a World War II historian with what I've read and watched I'm giving you something that I know a lot about here and I'm telling you we're making the same mistakes now listen to this According to Wikipedia, in the midst of the Great Depression, the Nazi, and there's a link right there, you can see it. In the midst of the Great Depression, the Nazis restored economic stability and ended mass unemployment using heavy military spending and a mixed economy. Who out there can tell me right now, I don't care if you agree with anything I've said or not, I don't care if you hate me, who can tell me that that isn't exactly what we're doing now? Extensive public works were undertaken, including the construction of highways and speedways, of course, the Autobahns. The return to economic stability boosted the regime's popularity. Just like the Democrats today, it says most people don't consider that the Nazis were socialists. That is precisely what they were. Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton. I think that the former game show host Chuck Worley nailed it when he said the best he's best known for his love connection there which he did through 82 to 94 of the uh, 80s Nazi is described as a far right organization yet they are socialists they were very left they Chuck but my but national social national socialist German workers party Nazi party Hitler Meaning, what did Nazi mean? National Socialist. Socialist is communism with a small tweaking in the way that it's handed out. Communism is socialism with a slightly different avenue of distribution. That's the way I'll describe it. Democrats don't value the country. They value the power of government. What is it they can give you? And there is a difference, he writes. Uh, Barack Obama and the Democrats, the Nazis love to give away free stuff. Kitty Weatherman was a child in Austria at the time that the Nazis took over. And this is her description. Fact cam right there. I'm not making this up. It's actually right there. Um, the Nazis were handing out what sounds like the Democrats are wanting to do today. 
newlyweds immediately received a $1,000 loan from the government to establish a household. Well, I took out a whole bunch of student loans. It was one of the worst decisions I ever did. I'm glad I didn't get $1,000 when I married Christelle that I had to pay back. Um, they had big programs for families. All daycare and education were free. High schools were taken over by the government and college tuition was subsidized. Everyone was entitled to free handouts like food stamps and clothing and housing. Well, the author writes, I like free stuff too. But at the end of it, someone always has to pay for all of that free stuff. You don't think it's made for nothing, do you? Somebody had to go to work and make it. Well, according to Kitty, our tax rates went up 80% of our income. And in America, we're moving in the same direction. Today, we actually pay about 50% of our wages in taxes. Are you understanding what I'm saying here? Before Hitler, we had very good medical care. Now many American doctors are trained at the University of Vienna. After Hitler, health care was socialized. That would be Obamacare. It was free for everyone. Doctors were salaried by the government. The problem was, since it was free, people were going to the doctors for everything. When the good doctor arrived at his office at 8 in the morning, 40 people were already waiting, and the same time slots were given to them. The hospitals were full, and if you needed an elective surgery, you had to wait a year or two, maybe to get to get your turn. And there was no money for research, and as a result, people stopped going there, and they started getting their medical degrees from Austria. Well, isn't that interesting? Because I can tell you a story. Um, a low def, you can try. I'm going to put my middle finger up, use your potty humor. Um, low def, you can see it very, very well. I'll give it to high def. Low def. Uh, and a high def. I cut the tip of my finger off. It was a m rather miserable experience. And with the insurance I had, I was able to save my finger. I can still play keyboards very well, thank you very much. And I was able to afford the care. I got vertigo once. It was a nightmare. I thought I was having a stroke. I thought I was dying. Um, it took a week to recover. I had enough money to pay my deductible. I had enough money to take a week off work. Thank you, insurance. I was paying. Now, my insurance is crappy, and if I were to cut the tip of my finger off, it would probably result in me going bankrupt, and this is because of Barack Obama. Insurance rates have gone through the roof under him, and this is exactly what I'm talking about here at Nazi Germany. Are you hearing me? Please forget about gassing Jews for a minute and listen to how the nightmare started. Let's pretend that Hitler had never gassed any Jews at all. Well, would it have been nice to live under this regime where they take 80% of your pay? I don't think so. You're going to give me the argument that uh, Hitler was attacking his neighbors. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll see if the parallels still go on. But right now we have national socialists, our enemies, deadly enemies. And then listen to this. Our present capitalist system, with its exploitation and economic weak, we are all resolved under our circumstances to destroy the system. In other words, national socialist, be a Nazi, Gregor Strasser, put himself out as an enemy of both capitalism and communism. Both. Says, like the Nazis, our society is very militarized. Just prior to World War II, the Germans probably had the most powerful military on the entire planet because they built it up under Hitler after uh, the Treaty of Versailles. Says they love to use their military to push other countries around. Well, what are we seeing now? Let's listen to Kitty again. She survived this nightmare. Let's listen to it. Next came gun registration. Oh, well, all of our Democrats love their gun registration, right? Well, let, let's see how it worked out in Germany. Let's listen to somebody that lived through it. People were getting injured by guns. So Hitler said that the real way to catch criminals, and we still have a few, was by marching serial num matching serial numbers to guns. Most citizens were law-abiding and dutifully marched to the police station to register their guns. Again, they thought Hitler was their friend. Not long afterwards, <coughs> excuse me, 
The police said that it was best for everyone to turn in their guns. The authorities already knew who had them, so it was uh, futile to not comply voluntarily. Well, just like the leftists today, the Nazis in this regard only have the technical, now they have the technological power to actually pull this off. It says 64% of all recording, 64% of all of our phone records are monitored and our emails are monitored. We spy on our enemies, we spy on our friends like the French and the Germans, and we even spy on the little old lady down the street. Are you seeing the similarities? Republicans and Democrats in Congress are both looking for the same thing. What did uh, Sog Sanger write? The most merciful thing to do to an infant is kill it, which is what we're seeing now with some of the illegal abortion practices. Again, I'm not against all abortions. I've covered this before. Um, author Bruce Walker writes of the swastika and the cross, the Nazi war on Christianity. The Nazi in Gott and Volk was distributed in 1941 and describes the life cycle of a German youth in the future who would, quote, with parties and gifts, the youth will be led painlessly from one faith to another. Basically, the goal is to make them grow up without God. Listen to this. They will have never heard the Sermon of the Mount, the Golden Rule, or any of the Ten Commandments. The education of the youth is to be confined primarily by the teacher, the officer, and the leaders of the party. Oh, you mean like the Democrats who are taking uh, religion out of school today. Is that what you mean? That's what Hitler did. The priests will die out. And of course, make all, pre make all priests look like pedophiles, for instance. And I'm not Catholic, but I'm, I'm smart enough to know they're not all pedophiles. Um, they have estranged the youth. No, not deputies of God. They will not be deputies of God. But anyway, the best Germans, and they shall we train, or how shall we train, train our children, excuse me, thus as though they had never heard of Christianity. What are we seeing in this country today? It's almost like we have never heard of Christianity. He's got, I spent a lot of time on that. But it's for a reason. This stuff really, really matters to people. Now I've got three stories to get to. Don't go away. Because I've got the dumb D's of the day. How many of you like the Dunce Cap of the Month show? Great. I have dumb D's, as in three of them. Three dumb D stories. I normally end with one per day. but And I save the rest for the Dunce Cap of the Month show. I can't do that now because I have so many freaking dumb D's. They're coming on my ears. They're coming on my nose. They're coming on my woohoo. So I'm going to have to give you three today just to catch up in time to do it next month. And before I do so... Before I get to the idiots, the idiots, my God, they're everywhere. Christelle, if you're listening, I'm dying of thirst. The idiots that are everywhere. Before I get to them, check this out. Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. You can find him at Facebook.com. Look up Mike McLaughlin. He writes poetry. He writes fiction. He writes all kinds of really, really cool things. He's a uh, political commentator. And you can go ahead and look him up. Let him know you heard about it from the correct views. He's work. I think he's finished it now. The vampire novel. Tell him you want to buy it. You heard about it from uh, the correct views. Also, don't forget Sticker Junkie. StickerJunkie.com. Make some of the most amazing stickers you'll ever see. Passing time stickers. So popular we can't even keep them in stock now. Uh, this is the quality of sticker you'll get from StickerJunkie.com. Uh, go into the the uh, the search engine. Uh, that, not the search engine. Go to StickerJunkie.com and type in promo code correct views it might be the correct views you're going to get an amazing deal on your stickers and how good are they going to look they're going to look this good they're going to look that good and that's pretty damn good all right friends you want it here comes i even give you your dumb d music oh yes let me lean forward so that uh this mic can catch it oh yeah the dum dee dum dee dum dee dum dees of the day. That was an awful fade out. I'm usually better than that. Alan Salazar, PrisonPlanet.com. No whites allowed. Seattle yoga class for people of color excludes Caucasians. Now, I would not be in favor of this because I, I have a lot of very close black friends. But let me ask you something. How many are all colors for that matter? 
if black people decided, if white people decided, I should say, they wanted to have a yoga class that didn't include white people, I would be the, or black people, I would be the first person to say that those white people were bigot bastards. However, when people of color do the same thing to white people, well, they're somehow not bigoted bastards. I don't agree with that, and that is precisely why it's getting the dummy of the day. A yoga studio in Seattle is accused, and rightly so, of promoting racial discrimination by holding special sessions which exclude explicitly whites. Rainer Beach Yoga in Seattle has allowed five queer people of color to create, to create a special class entitled Yoga for People of Color, an exclusionary yoga session whose rules expressly forbid white people from attending reports. Or the uh, KIR, KIRO radio host, Dory Monson. Now, how about if I started a straight white person's yoga class that did not include anyone who was not both straight and white? Would you think I was a racist prick? Because I would be. And this person who did this on the other side of the coin, these four people, they are one, two, three, four racist pricks who are getting the dumb of the day. And if that offends you, welcome to the correct views. It happens all the time. The class reportedly welcomes people of any body, shape, size, gender, or yoga experience, according to an email blast received by a Cairo listener. The class also invites lesbian, bisexual, gay, queer, and trans-friendly affirming and identifies which people of color are okay, such as African-American, black, and of African-American, dysphoria, Asian, South Asian, West Asian, Arab, Middle Eastern, Pacific Islander, First Nations, Alaskan Native, Native American, Indigenous, Chino, Chiquino, Latino, multicultural, and mixed race. For one thing, they should probably learn that Alaska is, in fact, a state. Uh, it's like those idiots that said they were going to go to Alaska if uh, Trump became president so that he wouldn't be their president. 